Do you want me to introduce you? Yes, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Butler. Uh, co-creator of, uh, co of Librarians for a Small Business. And that sketch show from the late 90s. What was that? You know, the mockumentary <laughs> one? Oh, Small Tales and True. Yeah, was yes. that, yeah that was great. Yes, uh, and, thank you. Um, is it the Gris... Grist Mill. Grist Mill. Grist Mill. Grist Mill. The brand. Don't damage the brand, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, 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 Andrew. Adam. You've damaged my brand. <laughs> I'm, sorry. Um, I'm so worried about my mic. It keeps hitting my face. Right. What is it? Oh, there's a check coming. Oh, good. And uh, yeah, and um, I'm Adam Zwa. Oh, well, allow yeah. me. Yeah, please. Uh, Adam, Sw Adam Zwa, co-creator of uh, Lowdown and Wilfred, uh, and practically everything else that's ever been written. You seem to have a hand in everything. Uh, AFI awards, yeah. sketch shows, yeah. everything that sort of pops up. You seem to. Don't seem look too to closely. There's some Thank real you. skeletons in, in my closet. Um, the wedge. Quite <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I see your wedge and I raise you the comedy sail. <laughs> oh, doesn't get better than that, see? Oh, Can't top that. No, that is, well, I think the wedge is pretty, pretty bad in anyone's language. But um, uh, we wrote some questions. Uh, we've been kind of uh, going through email because of the writers, uh, because of the, you know, there's no moderator. Um, and the first question we wrote, mm -hmm. we tried to make it kind of like a, a chronological arc, a little story arc, um, is what inspires you? What inspires you? What's that first kind of um, uh, spark of inspiration? I, th I think in truth, to, to be honest, I think the short answer is everything. I think really, and I think if you are a funny bones, I think if you are one of one of us, that, that generally you, you see something potential in in everything you see you see comedy in in everything that happens um, I, I think different things inspire me I can get quite angry I think hypocrisy and intolerance and people being mean and that kind of thing inspires me that generally I think that inspires a lot of a lot of <laughs> comics but it's um, a lot of funny people, and, and their answer is to write comedy about that. That's harder to write in the um, in the short term when you're writing narrative comedy. That's that's a harder thing to achieve. That's why we've started just posting little online videos, um, uh, just quickly turning sketches around and, and sticking them online because we get angry about things. That's that's sort of a, a, a thing that we've been doing lately. Um, but I think generally, uh, I think that's a real advantage with with thinking thinking funny. Do you think that? Yeah, I just I was going to say, you know, there's that we talked about it a little bit before about that. There's a, often um, a two year turnaround between having a show on air and a lot of water goes under the bridge in that time. So you write the scripts maybe a year before production. And uh, so having that online, you know, writing something and, and putting it up online, you immediately ex exercise whatever demons are going on. It is. Yeah. It's a fantastic thing. It feels incredible. You film it, you edit it, and you post it the next day, and it's there. And then two weeks later, you can you can do another one. Yeah. But I read those um, those stories, like in Tina Fey's book, when she's describing, I don't know how many people have read it here, but when she's describing um, when she collapses at one point, you know, in tears, because she's working so hard on the turnaround in 30 Rock, because they're just right, even though they have 10 Writers, can you imagine? Um, but they, the, the, the turnaround, shooting and writing at the same time. And I was reading that article that Gary Shandling, oh, yeah. that fantastic article in GQ. I don't know if anybody's come across that, but um, it's talking about that that crazy meltdown that you have. But I can't. That is so foreign for mm. our production schedule <laughs> because it's exactly that. We write the scripts and they're all intact, and then we go into production, and it's something. Yeah, you ask for some money, <laughs> you know, and then yeah, you, you get it made. I um, I was thinking this morning on that on that question of what inspires me, and I think um, the first first thing is character. But then people inspire me, and then and I think a character could kind of uh, be based around that person. 
but and I, that's what I did at the start. But I found that was a, kind of a faulty method because the story needs to come at the same time as character. You can't just you can write yourself black and blue when you're just writing you know monologues and scenarios little scenarios or sketches for a little character but if you don't have a, a story and the story's not going to um, either be suitable for a feature or suitable for a, a narrative comedy then um, I don't know you just got to keep the ca- <laughs> that little character on ice for so, a while so where's the point for you where, where character becomes the story you know when the character drives the story through when's that um, well, I, I was thinking that I, I think it's I force myself now to just think in terms of story straight away. If oh, I, right. you okay. know, if there's a, a character that I want to explore, then I have to force myself to actually come up with a story for it. You know, right. yeah. or else I've just been hurt too many times by just going down the writing <coughs> portraits that actually have no beginning, middle or end. You know, there's, no, there's no narrative at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I managed, to, you know, I think that's a discipline thing and a, and a craft thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what inspires me. And, then, and the idea of working with other people, you know, you see people that you want to work with and, yeah. and uh, let's get a project together. Yeah, and you do that a lot, don't you? You well, you seem to. You seem to work with quite a few different groups of, well, of I've people. Had, I've had two collaborators really, and that's Jason Gann on Wilfred and Amanda Brocci on Lowdown, and she's here tonight. Um, yeah, I. Otherwise, I'm just sort of like a writer, you know, for hire or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and it's, it's such a interesting. You know, Relationship having a new, getting a, a, a comedy partnership happening, it's um, you know you have to. There's a little journey you go on. Uh, how many? How many? Uh, <laughs> just the just one. The one? Which one? <laughs> no, well, no, that's not true. I have had, I have had more. <laughs> that sounds, of course, I've had more. Obviously, um, no. I, I, I've written with with various people, but yes, it would be true to say for the last four or five years, it's uh, it's been that very intense comedy partnership has been with Wayne, yep. which is which is great. And I can't quite imagine what it would be like to be at the level we're at now with somebody else, mm. to be able to kind of. We just don't take it personally, you know. If we, am, am I sounding really ridiculous? Am I sounding really loud? No, no, that's no. fine. Um, uh, take criticism from each other per- personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not, it's, it's not personal. It's just, it's, it's about. The script, and only if we're, you know, having a fight about something else, really, and it's coming out in that. But, but you know, generally, it's. <laughs> I know what you're really mad about. You know, to, we we just don't get upset, and I, I don't know what that would be like not to have that, to have that sort of um, elasticity, you know, that robustness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we did we did have a really great thing the other day when we were making a, this uh, an Arabella Twat, which is these one of these little online videos that we've been making. Who and I play this right wing radio jock, and Gary McCaffrey, who we collaborate with, had written a bit of a sketch, and Tony Martin, who's playing a character, had come over, and he was pl- uh, he was going to do a bit, and Wayne had. Was written a bit, had written a bit, and he was filming, and there were four of us in our tiny shed, which is seriously about as big as this, and we were all writing together as we were going, like filming this and just sort of improvising as we were going and filming, and that was really fun. And I thought actually we've all worked together for a long time now in in various means, and there is a real uh, robustness in that that you can have four people in a shed together in, in close proximity and just be flinging ideas. And no, I don't think that works, and I don't think that works. That feels pretty good. That's good. That's mm. good. And, uh, yeah, it's certain. Yeah, you need to have a certain amount of flying hours before you can just kind of yeah. like let let criticisms brush off you yeah, and yeah. things like that. Yeah. That's right. Um, I. I've always been pretty sensitive. <laughs> I'm going to say. Um, no, but you looked like you were shedding a tear yeah, then. Yeah, I've, uh, but, um, it, but I think I've, I've, uh, uh, I think it's like you, uh, you know, you, you go. It's like a relationship. You go through the, you know, the great let's ride it together. Oh wow, you don't. There's some things about me you don't like. Yes. And then, and then, then you become 
hopefully robust. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, Can I skip to another question that we had then on that? Yeah, yeah, is, please. Is how do you take... Oh, no, is that wrong? Should we stick to the chronology? Oh, no. no. How, how, <laughs> Forget the chronology. <laughs> how do you handle... I think uh, that was... What was it? How do you uh, how do you deal with notes from networks or actors or relatives yeah. or? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do, I, well, I, I did a um, I did a uh, a TV show as an actor with um, Wayne uh, Wayne Hope and um, it was called Crash Burn. It was probably two thousand and two, and and I was just starting out uh, writing where I, I had a feature. And um, and he said, oh, Robin's got this great thing. When you go into networks or you go into many producers, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with their ideas, you write it down. <laughs> it is a little bit true. true. And you don't need to take the note or not, or you can just go back later and say, ah, it didn't work. Well, I, you I got that down. from radio because radio is just full of such... <laughs> I just remember this was being filmed and I just stopped myself. But, you know, such cock knocks, really. Just idiots. And these big idiot guys would say the most ridiculous things. And I just found the... Rather than, rather than say any, I just found the easiest thing to do was go, gotcha, uh-huh, yep, and write it down. And they'd never bother you again. They didn't notice. They wouldn't know if their ass was on fire. Like, they just... They didn't know. So it was just quicker and simpler just to agree yeah. and, and say that. I, I don't generally do that with, with proper things, though. <laughs> with people you respect. No, yourself. no. And I, I find this may be ridiculous, this may be too much, but I, I was thinking about this question and I reckon 90% of notes are valid. Mm. Not to say they're all worth taking on, but generally if someone says... Um, something that you might get something out of it you think well I don't really agree with you but what maybe you're saying is that that moment's not clear that that moment isn't clear for you and I'm I'm actually a, a bit of a demon for notes because I can't bear to think that anybody's in the lounge room going hang on if she was just in the how did she get over in the like I'm actually a bit of a does it not work tell me if it doesn't work tell me if something's not clear and I'll I'll, I'll fix it um so I'm quite happy to receive notes. And I think, I don't know, do you ever have that instinctive thing? I have that instinctive thing where somebody says something and it will go, it will penetrate and I'll think, yep. Maybe it's something that's yeah. been playing at the back of your mind. Absolutely. There, there, but there's some, some people who give notes, some network people who give notes, it gets straight to the heart of the matter. And then there's other people that just kind of give inconsequential notes. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, I remember at uh, SBS we had a, a situation where we, um, there was a new commissioning editor and she didn't know anything about Wilfrin and she gave th these notes which I took exception to and, and uh, I gave this very <laughs> long rehearsed speech to the three network people and um, it was good, not a dry eye in the house, it was great. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, yeah, and, and uh, then finished, and then at the end they said, right, so shall we continue through the notes? And, and, I, and I had to, and that was, and, you know, so really whatever you say doesn't matter, you know, we're going to, they've got to be heard. Yeah. And uh, it, it ultimately, it, it doesn't matter. But I, I'm also interested in, in the, the notes from actors and relatives. <laughs> Have you ever had those situations? My husband gives me notes quite regularly. Um, uh, actors uh, coming on set? A, a little. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of, of an example. Sometimes I think, I often think if an actor's struggling to remember a line, unless they're... They... Um, I just said a name under my breath that I can't say out loud because I haven't learned their lines, but then I would get in trouble if I said... Um, uh, if, unless they're... A, unless they, you know, I find if an actor's struggling with lines, sometimes maybe it's not well written. Yeah, right. And I think, no, that, uh, there's probably a better way of saying that. I, th I often think that's, that's my, my problem, but I don't think... Um, 
I don't think actors generally uh, have had problems. That sounds very arrogant, doesn't it? But I, I, I'll think of something. You think of You tell me. Oh, well, no, it probably happens a little bit more on those long-running shows, you know, on, on US television or maybe, you know, network shows and, uh, in Australia. And I, I don't know, anyone at the screen, who's been to the Screenwriters Conference might remember these stories. Um, one was David Chase... And the Sopranos, an actor came on set and said, my character wouldn't say this. And he said, who said it was your character? <laughs> Which I think is a good line. And, and David E. Kelly, uh, same thing, an actor said, my character wouldn't say this. And David E. Kelly was called down. Um, this was on Alec McBeal. And uh, he, he looked, he said, can I see the script? And the actor showed him the script and he said, who are you playing? And he said, oh, no, 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 policeman number two. And uh, he said, no, no, your character does say that. <laughs> End, end of end of story. Yeah. So that there's a there's kind of a thing. And I, I did and I there was with relatives. I did have a, a director and I I'm I'm allowed to tell the story. I've asked him and uh, he he used to have a, a girlfriend who'd always give notes, but you weren't there privy uh, to her actually giving notes. He would always say, Alison thinks this. Alison thinks that about the script. About the script. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and I knew that he and Alison were having troubles, um, <laughs> but I didn't know how advanced it had got until you know we were having script notes for one draft. And he goes, "Yeah, Carol records the third act could be tightened up a bit." I went, "All right, so that's Carol." No. <laughs> Alison's out of the picture. Did prefer Alison's notes to Carol's. Got to say. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I I did I. I think you can tell, though, and I think, you know, that thing that you have an instinct when some things are right, and I think also that you know when some people are wrong, and I, I have actually requested that somebody not work with us anymore. That's... An actor? No, 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 sorry, a network person. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Not work with us anymore because I thought their notes were just ridiculous. Yeah. And so when I say 90%, that was like a full 9.9% .9 of the other one, and that was, that was good, that happened. That was so, so I think those things can be solved. Yeah, yeah. Those problems can be solved. No, it's, a, it's uh, an interesting world which requires diplomacy and, and, and also <laughs> humility, you know, from yeah. on our behalf. Yes. Uh, but some people, you know, we've had pretty good experiences with some people and, and uh, not just with script but with casting and and it's, you know, you know when a note hits, it's almost like it, you can feel it in, yeah. in your gut. Yeah. Um, My favourite one, I've, we're working on a, a feature film. It's not television, but I'll just digress for a second. And somebody um, that we're working with said, you know, you have to... Uh, change the first 40 pages and make them into five. Five pages. <laughs> five pages instead of the first 40, make them into five. Is this after reading the script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is after working quite, you know, for, for, for a couple of months on it. And I, I went... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I laughed. But I laughed kind of because I knew it was right. And I'd gone through and I knew that the story didn't really start for the first 40 pages, but I was so busy setting up yeah. everything, which I think is what you do in television sometimes, but this is a different thing. But that was one of those moments where I laughed kind of a laugh of, of pain because I, I knew it was right and it was one of those moments yeah. that was... Uh, I, I managed to do it after after some thinking, but... You know, I don't know why sometimes... I don't know why it is that you you don't see it yourself. Somebody has to point it out to you. You sort of know, but someone yeah. has to point it out. That's annoying. But it's also that grieving thing of, of uh, grieving all that writing that you have to lose. Yeah. And sometimes I, can't, I need a week after having written it <laughs> before I can actually lose it. I need to have it there. A little, little burial, yeah, yeah. a little send-off service. That's right. It's yeah. like, let it live for a week. Yeah. You know, have a life. Yeah. Um, but with actors, I have to say that Amanda is the um, uh, actor whisperer. Like, if an actor doesn't understand the line or doesn't understand yeah. it, she's able to explain it to them, whereas I just say... Just say the line, you know. It's, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I haven't got any that facility really to explain why yeah. why things are yeah. why they are written the way they are. Um, I have to. I must admit, when actors, you're right. Actors do say, or actors, I find often want to add something. They want to go. Maybe I could do this. I go. Yeah. 
Maybe. <laughs> Maybe just do what's on the page. I've got some ideas. <laughs> I've got, I love got some ideas. Do you write uh, roles with actors in mind? Yes. Pretty well always now, yeah. I think. I didn't used to, but now I just find it easier. I find, maybe because um, we're a bit further down the track, so I'm, I'm thinking about... I've actually found it easy with projects we've got now to go, it's him, it's her, it's him, it's her. Right. Not that they're necessarily well-known or anything, but just that this is a picture of what this person is and here's a little bit of video of them. Just, just sometimes it's easier. and so I find it easier with speech rhythms and vernacular and I used to think that I think I was more precious than that I used to think that I could I would create it all from here and all the characters in my head and but of course they are but they're my versions of yeah. what these actors might do I find it um, I find it quite liberating and um, Wayne said, I was, um, we're writing something at the moment, I'm, I'm writing it up, and I, he, this doctor is in this scene, and he said, who's, who's the doctor, do you think, who's playing doctor? I went, I don't know, she's got red curly hair and a big purple bow in her hair, and she's very gregarious, I'll find her, I'll find her, but I have it, that's, that's unusual now, I've got that, that sort of an older way, yeah. I think. Yeah. You, what about you, what do you do? Um, I, we're always talking about characters, we're always talking about actors, um, in Lowdown, there's Paul Denny, uh, who plays Bob. Um, yeah, he was never going to go to anyone else, really. <laughs> uh, he, he, uh, we, and we also used a little bit of a little bit of his life. He's a f massive Doctor Who fan. And, oh, and, okay. and, uh, in the show, he's you know he's got his his lucky Tardis and and things like that. Um, and uh, now, but having done the first series, the second series. Writing-wise, is easier because you know who the actors are who are going to play the characters. Because yes. Kim came late in the piece for the editor, um, so now we've got Kim's voice in our head. We're able to write. That changes, doesn't it? Yeah. That must change from not having written with him in mind yeah. the first time to write. Yeah, I can see that would it change was, it. it. It was interesting, in, and uh, um, but yeah. So that, I, I think it's it's quite it's quite. Um, as you say, liberating this time around, you know, because we, we we know who's playing who. But we, I was, I think it was just Paul and Dale and the Doctor. Um, he he was someone who we wrote for because he's got this, you know, he's always been like thirty three, going on seventy seven or something. <laughs> he was always the old man in a young man's body, and we wanted to make use of that. Right. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so, but it is fun. It's fun, and you, and you hope that they'll embrace it as much as as much as you think, as much as your imagination thinks they will. Yes, yes. Um, also, I think too, if they don't, if the person you had in mind doesn't end up playing it, that's it's only helpful anyway. I think yeah. because you've you've got something, you've got a voice on the page. You know, you've got a, a tone and a character on the page. Um, I was, I'm interested to know where, where Frances uh, came from and where, where she was. It always something. Was that first? Did Frances come first, or did the librarians come and then? No, Frances? the librarians came first, and the librarians was an odd thing in that we didn't set out to write that specific thing. Like the things that we've written since, I think, or that we're writing now, we've 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 really thought about what we want to write. The, the librarians came about because Ros, Ros Hammond, who, who played Christine and it was, um, she and I wanted to do something together. We hadn't done anything for a while since Small Tales and True, actually, and we thought we wanted to do something on the telly. And we'd met on the Eric Banner show. I've said this story before, and you've probably heard it, but um, we'd uh, worked together on Eric Banner's sketch show. That's where we met. And I'd created this character called Lynette the Librarian, who was actually a very shy, retiring, like, sort of more quintessential, you know, stereotypical librarian, I suppose. We'd never filmed it, but Rosie and I had always really liked it. And she said, what about that character you did? And she said, I've been hanging out in my library lately. I've been, you know, writing in there. And it's really fun. It's, the people are in there that, you know, are really fun. So we started writing something and all we, the, the only thing we got was that <laughs> Dawn, 
um, is one of the assistant librarians. She has an unfortunate accident in a motorised unit. It ends up in a motorised unit. That's the only thing we wrote. And then Rosie got some theatre gig or something that went away for, you know, she went away for a year. But I think we'd already applied for some Phil Victoria seed funding. And so I went into Wayne and I went, okay, we've got to write this thing. It's set in a library and we've got Dawn who's in a motorised unit and that's where we've got to, we've got to go from. So we sort of wrote it from the outside in. I don't think that's the way I write normally. I, 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 I don't think we would have ever gone, we would have ended up there. But we did think that Frances, I think Frances was a lot more, was not passive aggressive to start with. She was a bossy boots, but she wasn't passive aggressive. And we started to realise after a while that it was more fun if she was held under rather than um, outward with, with her expression. And then we thought, well, that's fantastic, really. It's a controlling person, a control freak in a place of absolute control. It kind of makes sense. But it did take us a while to get there. And just on that, sometimes I think it's... So she, she came later. It took, it took us a while, I think, to go, it's really about Frances. It's not really the librarians as such. It's actually about this woman and, and, and her, her thing. And we started writing in the drama department at the ABC. So we wrote sort of an episode, two episodes at a time. And we got a lot of notes back then. And I wonder sometimes if what we may have written if we hadn't got so many notes from the drama department. I don't know w whether it would have been better or worse, I don't know, but I think it was quite defined. I think they generally do give a lot more notes. Right, but you're drama. in the comedy. Yeah, we're in comedy, but uh, I know I've got friends who are writing, writing drama and they get like four sets of notes from different, from different yeah. sources, some named, some unnamed. Oh. Yeah, yeah, oh. so you get a whole lot of notes. and, and uh, but. I find with, because this Debbie Lee is mainly looking after comedy, so yeah. Yes. Um, I know that, the, the, I guess you wouldn't be encouraged to be funny in the drama. Well, you were, it was interesting, like there was much more emphasis on the beats and the, you know, you know I think I was going, what's a beat? What are you talking about? Like, you know, it was instinct to me, and sometimes they go, yeah, I'm not sure about that, and I go, that's funny. And they go, well, I'm not sure it serves. I go, no, 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 seriously, I put my comedy foot down there, that, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and, and we sort of got there, and, but, but it was an interesting start. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Then, then bizarrely, on Very Small Business, which we, sh we did the next year, they sort of said yes, and we sort of wrote it. We didn't get a note. We, then we went to the comedy department. We didn't get a note. Like, not... A, and we, it was that ridiculous thing where we were kind of going, can someone tell us something about what they think about this? Like, not a note. It was just like, then we shot it. It was bizarre. And so we've had very different experiences. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, you know, it's, it's the same with, with Wilfred Series 1. We didn't get notes. Yeah. And then Series 2, that's why I got this um, encyclopedia of notes, and that's when I... Oh, oh, right, that's, that's when that you little, had the... uh, little meltdown. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was interested to ask about craft. You know, has craft come... Because you said you were writing kind of more for inspiration back then, you know, when you didn't know what beats were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has, cra has craft kind of came, come more into your work? I think it has. Uh, <laughs> I'd be kind of crap sitting up here if I said... You read Sid Field? I don't Phil. think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have craft. Um... No, I, 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 think it, I think it definitely has. I think I know, I think I know a lot more. I think I still write instinctually and I think I got by a lot before on instinct, but I think now I do understand craft a lot more. I have a lot of rules that I have for myself. I think that um, I have a good meter, I think, in checking scripts. Yep. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a demon for notes. I'm a demon for the redraft. I'm queen of the redraft. Yeah, yeah. I'm very happy to, to go again. <laughs> um, dra drafting things. I found um, the thing Robert McKee says in his storybook, I don't know how many people have, have read that, are familiar with that, but the... the 
Well, we all have. have yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I found the thing he says in that about the positive to negative charge in a scene or the negative to positive charge oh, yeah. in a scene really, really helpful, which I think is just a way of saying an event happens in the scene, that something's got to happen, mm. which I think, you know, when I started improvising 20 years ago, that was what started in the middle of the scene, like make something happen. I think it's fairly, fairly basic for yeah. sketch writing, for all sort of writing, but I think it's a really good way of, of checking and I notice we get sent a lot of scripts you probably do too for people for feedback and mm. I've written an eight part series can you produce my show <laughs> we had a lot of that um, and it's interesting what I notice in less experienced writers is that inability to change direction in the scene to make an event happen that in a scene a, a, a dog bites a man and then in the next scene um, the man goes home and tells his wife that the dog bit him and then in the next scene the man goes to work and tells his colleague that the dog bit him and it's like yeah you got bitten by a dog it's <laughs> like I find that's a really really basic thing and and, you, and when you point that out no no but it's a different thing because now he's telling his wife and there's some really funny banter in there Mm. But information is, or is it, we know the reviews. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you, what's the advance? Yeah. You know, you've got rabies, or your wife's left you, or your leg falls off, or you know. Yeah. See, look how the ideas just come like that. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Uh, um, so I find yeah. that's a good way of checking a script for me. Is going back and going, you know, and I know it's different for comedy and all rules and whatever works and everything. But I find for me that's a good a good measure. What about you? What about craft? And yeah, yeah. Well, I, I used to be ins an inspiration person, and uh, but that's gone. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any ideas anymore. Generally, um, it's yeah. I, I, I so craft is almost completely taken over. Um, I think you know when I I did the wedge and we were doing, you, ha you actually had to write five sketches a day. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, inspiration. Went for the first on the first day, the first two sketches, mm. they were inspired, and then <laughs> after that, then you're going okay. That's really hard. Five craft. sketches a yeah, day is really hard. Yeah, that's when craft kind of takes over. And also, what you were saying, you know, I think half our comedies, I don't know how many, you know, beats need that needs to be. I think the next challenge, I haven't written um, an hour comedy or t TV hour. Uh, but I think I'd, I'd like to do that. I think I'd like to, you know, you, you understand the structure of, of those things. And it's, um, it's quite liberating because when you actually do have uh, some inspiration, you're able to have it. You've got a vehicle. Um, you've got the best possible way to actually, you know, uh, display that inspiration. Yeah. Rather than rather than just writing into into no man's land you know those situations i've been in those situations before where you just start writing with dialogue okay big it's I, I and people always told me it was a big mistake but i didn't listen and did it and wasted years of my life okay. you know where I, if i'd only had written um a story outline or or something i, I would have been in much better shape you know, yes. or the, the writing would have been in much better shape. Well, I think, but I think you sort of have to learn that, don't you? Have to stumble, and I think people do say that. But until you actually do it a few times and realise that, because you feel safe when you're writing dialogue. Dialogues, I call dialogue dessert because yeah. it's it's the easy part. It's filling in the gaps for me. But the story, that's the part. I seriously sometimes feel like I've got a fever when I'm writing the story. I swear to God, I feel like I think I'm coming down with something. Because <laughs> it's so hard. And I think that's the thing. Sometimes people say, oh God, you know, you've, you've done all this. I think, yeah, but it's really hard. Like it's hard for everybody, yeah, story, isn't it? Story, the outlines, when you're writing the outlines, that's always a little bit of a difficult time. So do you, how do you write, do you and Wayne, do you, does some, one of you do a draft and then, uh, and then other We tanks? generally have, well, it depends, you know, most things, that we do, we we write together. Or we do, we're doing a couple of different things at the moment, but the, if we're writing something together, we work out the story first. So, like this new comedy we're working on, we've sort of thought we argued a lot about what it was going to be about actually before we sort of you know we went argy bargy which is good i think you got to go argy bargy to make sure that it's good no one took offense at all no, no one no. took offense <laughs> oh, we might have taken a bit of offense but no and so we really worked out what it's going to be uh and then get the story um 
we oh that was interesting actually we we wrote we came up with the story we, we make sure that we've got uh, it's really really solid and then we go and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens so we basically do the scene breakdown in our head that might be a couple of weeks walking around the park in our office you know whatever um, then I generally go and write up the scene breakdown and then make sure the scene breakdown is intact and it all makes sense and only then uh, are we allowed to start writing dialogue? So it's very, very strict. Um, <laughs> and, but in fact, even, we even did that and we wrote th we, this, this new one we're working on. We wrote the whole thing and went, I think it's about the wrong character. <laughs> we really did. We wrote the whole first draft and went, I don't think it's about her. I think it's about her. Oh. So we that's went. Hard. That's hard. <laughs> so we went right back. And went bloody oh. hell. So we went round the park again and went. Okay. So then that happens and then that happens and then that happens. Um, and what if, yes. Oh yeah. It's, uh, I think with outlines. So we write. We can, we nut that out together at a table and then one of us will go off and write four outlines. The other one will go and write four outlines and bat backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Right. And that's the same with the scripts. Wilfred was different. Um, I I wrote the outlines because Jace was off doing something, gallivanting somewhere, and then we he'd write four scripts and I'd write four scripts. And then what's that like? No swapping, no swapping. He'll, he'll give each we'll give each other notes, but there's we've got credits on on each other's scripts, but it's uh, but yeah, there's no swapping there. So it was, what was that like? Um, I find that hard. Because it was two, if people watch Wilfred closely, there's two very separate voices. If you look at some episodes, it's like, it's, it's written by a completely different person. But, I, you know, on his scripts, I had, an, had written the outline, so that's, that was my input. Uh. So, yeah, it was an interesting experience because, but we kind of knew each other so well, too. It was, you know, we, you know, we knew what each other were going to what each other was going to do with a certain scenario. Right. That's hard to give over. The, I, I, when I, I write the dialogue generally, I, I write the script and then I hand it over for the red pen and then he sort of goes through it and goes, what about this, what about this? And, I mean, it's, it's sort of looser. But it's, sometimes it's looser, but it's good. It's a good system. It works. Yeah, yeah. I find, mm. I find a system we've got, Amanda and I've got, is good. Uh, and uh, more quality control there.